nobody ever did. The odds is real big. Job that's real big. Say trying a little. My God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards is real big. I gotta do it big. The only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to. Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you. They was blocking the shine. Now I think it's my time to. Capping them dollar signs like lights, they'll blind you. Let me rewind to. Back when I was broken, I couldn't acquire two cents. And now I got two rents. They was sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big. Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like canned food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world, my vision on Shamu. That mean I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Your offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I gotta do it big, that's the only way I can live. Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards, is real big. I got to do it big, the only way that I can live. What would you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 Wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Wow. I think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a sore, I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to. Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you. They was blocking the shine, now I think it's my time to. Capping them dollar signs like lights, they'll blind you. Let me rewind to. Back when I was broken, I couldn't acquire two cents. And now I got two rents. They was sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big. Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like canned food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world, my vision on Shamu. That mean I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Your offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I got to do it big. That's the only way I can live. Hey, man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards, is real big. I got to do it big, the only way that I can live. What would you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? 
And welcome everyone to the ECAC broadcast here on Esports U. My name is Rare Adam. Alongside me tonight is Sov Chan, and we've got ourselves some League of Legends action here tonight. Quarter finals game between RPI and Pace University. Sov Chan, how are you doing on this fabulous Friday? Oh, fabulous Friday indeed. I mean, I'm doing amazing. I'm here alongside you, Adam, the first time we're working together. So super, super exciting. And we're also due to a best of five series. So at least three games of League of Legends in a row. Just count me in. Yeah, going to be an interesting matchup here between these two teams. Of course, Pace, RPI looking to try to move on in the bracket and everything. And realistically, with the recent changes in the patch specifically, it's going to be a little bit of a different game, especially for some of our newer viewers here who, you know, after three weeks of that preseason patch, there's a little bit of an update. Nonetheless, still going to be some changes coming through. So what have you been sort of enjoying or maybe not so much enjoying in the free season thus far? I will say that we we have kept such a close eye on jungle, right? Because of the changes, because of the the little pets that can accompany the players there. So I think we we may see things differently in the jungle in this time around. One thing that I have been seeing very very um, consistently on collegiate has been seraphines in in the mid lane, and I don't know if that's going to be happening once again, but. It would be very nice to see it because, well, what is your opinion, Adam, on the Seraphine? Do you like her bot? Do you like her mid? Do you, do you not like her at all? <laughs> I, I think she's okay. I mean, realistically, I've sort of been looking towards some of these other AD champions who build Ravenous Hydra. I think that was sort of it's taken true. over the meta for a while. And then now, uh, especially in even in my solo queue games and stuff, I'm just running into Jack Show like eight times a game. And I'm like, oh, man, I, 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 like, I play support. I just wanted to, you know, do my thing. All of a sudden, there's just these tanky people running around, ruining my day. It's like a Diana building it too, you know, love the return of that. But nonetheless, we are into draft here, a game one on the docket, already through the bands. Early pickup on that Hecarim here. Interested to see how that plays out, especially with those Ravenous Hydra nerfs that just came down, actually. Mm-hmm. And we have the most recent champion being hovered as well. That's going to be super interesting to see it in play. But... I've seen so much Hecarim recently. He just works so well. And as you said, with with enough enough Revenous Hydra, is it going to make that big of a difference? Because he already has the, the damage in the AoE around him that Revenous Hydra can uh, land for, especially the ADCs that we've been having so much with that item, especially first item into the game. So we'll see if that's going to make that big of an impact in the Hecarim early game. Yeah, I'm curious to see how it plays out. And of course, the Cassante on the opposite side, sort of one of those abusers of some of these newer tank items because basically can be as tanky as a tank and then can still do the damage of a bruiser if he goes all out at the end of it, of course. But Lee Sin as the answer, that's an interesting one. A champion we haven't seen too much in the meta uh, over the last little bit, more so a very comfort pick oriented thing. You either know how to play Lee Sin or you just don't know how to play Lee Sin. It's sort of a, <laughs> the dichotomy there. It that is so true, Adam. And I I, I want to talk about uh, the bands as well because I've se I've seen a Talon there, and I haven't seen a Talon in ages. Is this a Revenous Hydra situation that we're seeing? It, was Talon like being benefiting of the Revenous Dry Revenous Rider, or was it a targeted ban for Pace University? That's what I'm curious about as well. I mean, if we see it sort of consistently throughout the series, it might just be one of those target bans. I think especially uh, in Collegiate, you do have a lot of players who are just very well known for one champion. I mean, one thing I noticed is Wayless has a whole bunch of games on Azir there, and that's been banned out as well. You know, three A bans coming through on the opposite side, but nonetheless, now you can see some of these other pickups coming down. The Zillion gets locked in really early here. Hecarim Zillion, such a scary combo. You know, Hecarim loves getting that movement speed and who knows it, Zillion's going to give you a whole bunch of it. <laughs> yes, he will. And also, you really don't want to see that Hecarim going onto your backline. You're focusing all the damage on him, and then he just resurrecting. Because Zillion is absolutely annoying. Well, we surely don't expect that Hecarim to do a Guardian Angel in the late game, because that's going to be devastating for base university they and instead they are looking for 
an interesting in between because we have Lee Sin, which is so good uh, jungler in the early game, and then you have Cassidy. And has got to wait for at least the level six, level eleven for that big power spike into the game. So we're looking for at least a mid game scenario for Pace University to try to come back ahead. Coming on to the second round of bans, we have Maokai on the side of RPI, the High Medinga. We've seen a couple of High Medingas in the bot lane, haven't we? Yeah, it, it's definitely one of those picks that uh, a lot of people were picking up because of Worlds, because they saw it there. And, yeah. you know, it's one of those situations where it's good in the right hands, but usually you don't see that outside of an Ashheim or Dinger lane. So interesting to see that bend out. Might just want to take some of that comfort away. Something I want to point out as well from the side of Pace here, they've sort of got three very distinct champions that are strong in three very distinct points of the game. You know, these tanks and bruisers, they get really strong in the mid game, specifically Cassante. After that, they start to get kited out. Of course, Lee Sin extremely strong in the early game. Afterwards, you know, falls off as well. And then Cassidy going to be that late game scaler. So it seems as if they've got all three sides of their game covered. Just depends on how they executed it and what they drafted in the bot lane as well. Because we're still yet to see any bot lane picks here. Of course, that zilling can be a little bit flexible. But really nothing picked up in the terms of the ADCs. And even with some of these bands, it doesn't seem like they're too worried about taking them away. Just the Samira removed from the table. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, alongside the the Zai as well. So we, it's going to probably just run towards. Okay, we got an army that might be an indicator of evolution army, but to be fair, an army works so well with any ADC as a matter. Um, yeah, I think in regards to the early game of the of this match, we might be looking towards how it's going to be played towards the bot lane because as you said for base specifically we have three distinct moments that are going to be great for each of these champions so you have to find at least one common thread and it might be on the bot lane and getting those early drakes oh zeri would you look at her would you look at that yeah i mean zeri getting picked up recently got a relatively large rework there where uh, her bullet pierce on her e specifically now isn't just three shots it is a duration based event sort of the same deal as how Sivir's ricochet got changed her ultimate got a little bit of that extra magic damage on hit taken away but her chain lightning is longer her w has a little bit of a quicker cast time and does physical damage instead so a lot of changes coming through to zeri one thing that they did take away was a whole bunch of range on her q which was nice and scary but nonetheless you can see the answer from rpi here they picked that zeri they indicate the zillion's going to be that support now the akali going to come through in that mid lane but overall it's going to be interesting to see this new Zeri sort of tooled up and ready to go against the likes of the Lucian Nami which is very likely to come down especially since Lucian very strong at level 2 but also has this build where they scale really well into the later stages Navori Quick Blades has been a blessing for Lucian yeah, I totally agree and I think um, specifically at level 2 as you mentioned we might see um pizza pie trying to get the double bombs but of course you're Lucian in level two you have to dash so you're gonna be fine and if you go a little too forward you might be bubbled up by nami so that might be a bad scenario for them we might be waiting to see hackerim coming into that lane for some action to come especially from rpi side whereas pace i especially with the leasing they're looking together all the aggression in this bot lane, maybe in the top lane as well, but especially here in the bot lane, because with that combo that you have, you really are not wanting to spend any sort of second not getting the pressure on that. Yeah, I think the main thing about this Lee Sin as well is that you have all of that early game pressure. You've got a very strong lane in the bot lane. I feel as if they're just going to be ganking that on repeat. And while Zeri's laning phase not as strong as it was before because she doesn't have, you know, 850 range on her Q or anything like that. And Zillion, you know, takes a little while to ramp up. I think that might be the target for Pace in that regards. But on the flip side, see what RPI have drafted for themselves. We sort of skimmed over this pick earlier. The Darius comes through into the Cassante. Definitely going to be putting that the most recent champion to League of Legends under a little bit of pressure there on that top side. And now this Hecarim as well has a lot of gank opportunities, potentially on the top side, maybe even in that mid lane before level six, because as you said, as we see, it's the, the Akali versus the Kassadin. The Kassadin takes a long time to ramp up. Yes, he does. And I mean, you have two champions there. They're a melee, they are AP damage. So they are kind of similar in those regards, but Akali is going to be able to clear the wave so much more efficiently than Cassidy in the early game. She's going to be able to stun and get more CC down and just go in in a much faster pace than Cassidy can do, as you mentioned, especially because of the scaling. So I totally agree. We might see um, 
JCQ coming with Hecarim in the mid lane, trying to get the pressure there. So you just leave Cassidy underneath the tower. You get all the pressure there. You don't let them farm anything because as soon as the levels come and if you let Pace University get to that online stage, if you nail a good defense on the bottom if you let it go for the late game that Cassidy is going to be so explosive and you do not want to fight against that exactly it's always about checking the clock i used to actually have a prop clock around here where i just hold it up and be like you know <laughs> it, it's almost Cassidy time or whatever kale was in the game you know 16 out of 16 and gotta keep an eye on the clock but nonetheless i have one final question it's my favorite question when i get to play by play it's my least favorite caster when, I, when i'm color casting who is going to take game one here what is your prediction here in game number one? Oh damn I don't know, this is a really, really close one in regards to draft because we mentioned so many things that combo well in early, mid and late game for both of these teams. I would definitely say that Pace has got a better curve because of the Cassidy. Um, but at the same time, the pressure that uh, Hecarim can do and how solid Darius can be in the mid to late stages of the game alongside the Zarya mobility with Akali as well. I think there's so much room for both teams to shine. So it's really going to depend on those early Drakes, the early Heralds and how they're going to manage getting key champions like the Cassidy under the tower and denied throughout the rest of the game. So we'll have to see if the prediction comes through in spades or potentially there is an upset in the books. RPI, a little bit favored here, I think, overall, just based even on solo queue ranks, but you never want to say die if you're the side of Pace University. Unfortunately, we're going to have to be a short break here while we get ready for a game, but when we're back, we'll be on to the rift with game number one. I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch it! What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the Fantasy Pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 Wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Y'all think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a sore. I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore. Just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying a little. My God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards. It's real big. I got to do it big. The only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you They was blocking the shine, now I think it's my time to Careful them dollar signs, like lights, they'll blind you Let me rewind to Back when I was broke and I couldn't acquire two cents And now I got two rents They was sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new Smell like can too I'm fresh forever like canned food Try and tell me what I can't do I wanna see the world, my vision on sham mood I mean I got goals that's real big Foes that's real big Your offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big Coming into the ring with blows that's real big I gotta do it big, that's the only way I can live Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset I mean, I've tried everything Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards, is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live.
What would you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 Wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. And welcome back to ECAC Esports here on the Esports U broadcast. And oh my goodness, already level one. We get to see a little bit of an invade coming through under the guise of darkness. Pace have snuck themselves into the RPI jungle. But ding dong, lights are on, but nobody's home. Seems as if they're just going to drop a couple wards down. Yes, they are. It's, it's so funny when things oh. like that happen, isn't it? Or oh, maybe they're going to be watching. Maybe they're going to get this area here is exactly <laughs> so they're just they're just fine it, but it's just so interesting when things like that happen because i don't know if rpi has any idea of all the rotation that pace has done placing in the ward and then coming back into their own jungle yeah it's a little bit strange you know they just ships passing in the night just going by each other there and no one none the wiser in that situation and now everything just gonna end up as normal you know it's going to be JQC Boz on that top side of the map, clearing out that blue buff, going to be clearing down towards that bot lane. Interestingly enough, Nitro going to be clearing towards that top side of the map, so potentially just going for some full clears here back and forth. But as expected here, it's just going to be the Zeri Zillion chilling in this lane, and already they have that front bush warded there just in case anything crazy goes down. Yes, just in case. In regards to the jungle there, we can talk about how the Nitro is going to try to go for the return through the bot lane because blue buff we we have Lee Sin going for most likely as you said for that full clear because they just trust that nami and lucian is going to be fine on their own and then they come then then they can come back and try to help but as we said in the draft we have akali doing some pressure here against the cassidy and i don't know adam do do you think we're going to see Oh, look at that. So much damage already on RPI. But do you think we're going to see an early gank from Hecarim here in the bot lane? I feel like it's a potential coming through from JQC here. You know, they're already pathing down there, but look at where the wave is sort of stationed as well. You can see Vision Leaf put in that river there by the side of RPI as well. They want to get eyes on Nitro, but Nitro's still going to be going in for a little bit of an invade here. JQC needs to be careful, but it might just be a long wraparound. This could be trouble. RPI's bot lane is way pushed up here. I think they might sniff it out here. Will they see Nitro coming? Yes, they do. And now off to the races they go. Execute doesn't have that oh. dash. Going to get caught with that resonating strike. It's got to be first blood going to the side of pace. And now chasing down Pizza Pie 12. Going to be flashed oh. over the wall as Nitro. They're looking for more. Another bell rung there as a double kill comes through for the Lee Sin. Great early gank from Pace's jungler. Yeah, Pace really looking neat in this early engages. We saw them being super confident in getting the the ward in the red buff in the blue side of the map. Then, even if we thought the Lee Sin was going to go for a full clear, they just took down that side of the jungle. They came back here in the lane, got a flank going, and also a gank here in the mid lane. Nice dodge from Akali. He's going to avoid any further skirmishes. But nice job from Pace in these early just three minutes of Summoner's Rift. Yeah, and you know what? Sort of living up to their school name, increasing the pace of this game, finding that early <laughs> double kill there. Of course, still going to be Exithy and Pizza Pie now, starting trying to freeze this wave the best as possible. But, you know, Pizza Pie going to have to cry. <laughs> the move present there, taking so much damage on the way out. Nitro, though, going to be the benefactor of both of those kills, finding themselves the timeout early. And, hmm, gee, I wonder what's a really strong item on junglers. Would it be perhaps Ravenous Hydra they're going for first item here? Oh, would, you, would that be the case? I don't know. Maybe that first item there on Nitro's hands is looking a little suspicious, I would say. But it's looking very nice for Pace at this time. We have the Lee Sin on two kills already, bot lane with two assists each champion. So it's 
very very nice setting them up for a good drake they have the vision and the scutter crab is probably going to um expire in a little bit but it's definitely enough to try and keep an eye on where hecarim is going to be and the lanes are, are going well so i think rpi right now just needs to try to scale and keep on farming and be wary of nitro <laughs> Yeah, just going over the wall waitlist trying to do that backflip out of there what? not going to be able to get out i think they flashed and they realized man my shuriken's on the wrong side of that fight it's three early kills for nitro here as we're talking about you know it's it's about trying to scale up a little bit here this zeri zillion is so potent in the later stages of the game but if you look at the gold difference here despite it being three gold or three kills up rather it is still cs leads across the board for rpi here specifically on that top side it's effectively a kills worth of gold they have as an advantage oh, yeah. but nonetheless they're looking lurking on this bottom side of the map evathy gonna try and find a way out of this one somehow some way pizza pie and evathy just gonna be able to walk that one out nitro finally misses their mark mm -hmm. after all of the perfect executions in these ganks nitro found themselves a little too short on the sonic wave but we are looking at both junglers going for up the presence here in the bottom side of the map they're gonna try to get some wardings down we have blue side warded up on the top river and then you have the the ward closer to the lane here on the bush for pace so they're trying to get the the presence on that river get to the pit and be able to do much there but we we see the the one person who's closest here is going to be boss they're going to try to clear some and just make sure the Lucian and army. Okay, you're not going to do anything now here because I'm I'm around. Yeah, I mean, that bot wave is also slow pushing back towards the side of RPI. Not really the best of situations as they can just sort of clear that out without too much trouble. Now she's going to sort of pick up that pace on the clear, but Wayless, once again, just going to hop over that wall. Nitro not going to get caught out there. And now it just seems as if they've given over that dragon pressure. RPI looking to collect this one up. And it doesn't look like there's going to be much resistance from the opposite side. Capricrack level 7 has that ultimate available. But as you can see in the inventory, it has about 0 AP. Well, they have 18 AP from the runes. But other than <laughs> that, it's, uh, you know, a whole bunch of nothing. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. It's going to rely on getting those... Uh, level ups and eventually getting those skills but I i'm a little concerned why did pace concede that first drake because they had good pressure in the in that area they should have just gone in tried to clear the the vision as did boss on those wards and then just communicate with the bottom lane say okay we're gonna get this pushed in so we have the pressure on the on the on the river but they decided to just concede it, go to the other side of the map. They're going to look for something on mid here on the Darius. They're still trying to be a little sneaky. Yeah, mid going to be looking for this one on that top side, fighting back and forth. But this Cassante is putting up a strong fight. Cassal, though, going to be taken down very low. I believe the bleed might be enough to kill. The kickback under tower, not quite going to land. Now MD <gasps> looking for even more. He's got the pass. If you can get the swing, Kasai going to go down. And now that bleed taking down onto Nitro, almost going to be enough. But here comes Boz looking to dodge away from all of these skill shots. Going to find that kill as well as RPI strike back on the top side of the map. Oh my god, mid. <laughs> that was amazing. Just sneaking there in the bush, being certain that they had enough damage to take down not only the top lane, but if Nitro came along and they did also take them instead, uh, boss is coming, of course, as a Hecarim does <laughs> at the speed of light to be able to back you up. So RPI coming up hot with, even though they were three kills behind on three minutes of the game, they now have the pressure on the objectives, they have the pressure on the lanes, and also getting that distribution of gold throughout the, the jungle and the top side. So it's starting to look a little better. Definitely looking a little bit better for the side of RPI, and I think that their farm as well has been working out in their favor. I mean, we look at that bottom side of the map, we talked about how strong this Lucian Nami lane is going to be, and it just seems to be falling short. Speaking of which, Evathy is level 7. They're going to try and go in. That's the ultimate pop. They'll be trying to find absolutely any damage that they can, but going to be forced to back off that exhaust just a little bit too much. Evathy, though, keeping that duration going. Nitro's coming down, though. They're going to have to find a way out of this one. Going to be going aggressive onto that Zillion, who's still level 5. Evathy going for the kill. Going to be able to find one. Not going to be able to find another one and now zaxon gonna be throwing down all of those bullets from the culling pizza pie just gonna be able to walk that one out shocked timo indeed the ultimate unnecessary <laughs> it's a one for one on the bottom side of the map
Now, to be fair, if, if the ultimate hasn't been popped, it would have been a dive confirmed, especially with Nitro there. But good pressure once again coming from Nitro in that lane. But now we might see Pace being feeling a little more confident in the damage. Well, uh, well, you're going to feel confident if you have your jungler backing you up. And Nitro is going to deal so much damage here on Akali. They have to uh, ulti away and they're safe for now. But it's looking very, very close on on all sides of the map, isn't it? Yeah, it's relatively even in terms of these fights at the very least. The goal may be a different story. Mid once again going to town here. It's all out. Cassante looking for absolutely anything. The heal comes down. What? And it's going to be what? mid turning that one around. The Darius goes to dunk town. Gonna be able to find that kill as well. Pizza Pie in the mid lane, though, finding a couple of bombs there on the Capper Jack, but with not a lot of damage in their own right. They're not gonna be able to find that kill, granted is over the wall they don't have their ultimate available but they might still be able to strike nitro gonna be forced to back out yeah jqc is really confident there on the hack room of course you you are so fast you can just gather invades going on you have the mid lane pushed so much that as you mentioned the bombs from pizza pie landing there on the kappa jack was super great damage was stacking they had to retreat they had to reset including nitro themselves so lovely presence in the mid lane and in the jungle and even though it looks fairly even and it did look fairly even in gold now rpi is coming into at least a 3k gold lead for themselves so that is definitely because of how greatly they have been farming all throughout the match we can see here the difference in gold for both teams and players and especially in the bot lane we have almost a 30 CS lead for Zeri compared to Lucian, which is a, a little surprising, I would say. Yeah, and of course, Zeri has that sort of farm aid in terms of a rapid fire. JQC Boz, though, all the way in that back line. Look at how much damage this Hecarim is doing. The culling, though, going to be forced out here. Boz just going to back out. A little bit of a back scratch there for the horse. But might have almost gone into their doom. But look at this. Nitro now coming around the side. Whale is here as well. Fight on multiple fronts here. Trying to find the angles here into this fight. Going to be Rift Child popped on that bottom side of the map. Should be able to confirm that tower as well. But Whale is now in a little bit of a pickle. Going to be forced to try and find their way off out of you there it's gonna be over the wall with that perfect execution just to perfectly escape that situation but still everyone stands up here exit gonna pop that ultimate as well get a little bit of movement speed are they gonna continue the fight shots over the wall gonna keep that ultimate going capper jack now gonna be going in over the wall exit now level nine do they have the damage the kickback gonna go down to whalers capper jack gonna be going into that back line once again whalers has that ultimate on top of them but the series left untouched she's found one she's found two will she find more no it's traded to the other two members whalers and pizza pie get on the board and it's a massive win for the side of RPI. Oh my god, Adam, such a massive win that we we not only saw the Zeri popping off on a double kill, could have been a triple kill as well, but it, it went for the mid laner there. But gosh, really, they they managed to turn a 4v3 into a victory for themselves, and not only that, a Drake confirmed for boss too. It's going to be the second one for RPI in this game. Oh, look at the soul we have going on. Look at that. We're gonna have the can tech soul for this match which is going to bring a lot of interesting things into play especially because we are in the preseason and this little bad boy has been reintroduced into summoner's roof yeah of course giving you the stimmy plants and everything the supercharged you know everything basically the plants are crazy and there's so many <laughs> of them as well nonetheless it's going to be a little bit of a 1v3 situation here for mid on this top side might have just missed but oh my what? goodness never mind they go back in with a big old dunk they're what? looking for more nitro <laughs> gonna go down as well whale is stealing that one away and the what? bleed on to uh, gonna be taking them down as well it's three kills on the top side mid is a man on a mission and rpi they've opened up somehow some way an eight and a half thousand gold lead they are on fire now Oh my god, 402, 450 gold bounty for this top laner of RPI. They, they got so many platings as well on that top side. Goodness me, <laughs> the bleeding was insane. The dunk was just so precise that taking him down. Oh my god, the follow up from the team as well. And now we have Zeri pushing this mid lane and she has become super, super strong. So it's really nice to see how she can have a lovely performance as she has been doing. 
boss oh is going to be able to get a flank going on if necessary. But look at her positioning. Look at how much damage that. she's doing. Look at that. She has to flash away. So strong at this point. Boss is going to go over the wall. Take down Rue once again. Exity finds another one. It's just all of that residual damage. The chain lightning doing so much work here. It's going to be what? a double kill for the Zeri. My goodness, this champion is on fire. All of RPI are on fire. And now it's going to be Capperjack knocked back. Not quite going to go down. Exithy did finally run out of their ult, but their ghost is still going. It's another kill going in favor of RPI. They find four in the mid lane, and it's all falling to pieces for Pace here. After a very strong early couple of levels, they are now just at the mercy of RPI. Oh my god, you have illusion with Gale Force, and as a Zeri with Shield Bow, you, you just don't care! You really don't care! Oh my god, she was healing a lot, she was she was able to get that shield from the Shield Bow, and she was positioning, I don't know, like three levels ahead from Zillion, which is usually like, you, you'd like your, your ADC to be a little more far behind but they they really don't care that's why they're five two oh. oh the dive is coming the turret is gonna go down and maybe cassandra's mother oh. is gonna fall to the flash away nitro is gonna follow and the shutdown for pace that's gonna be a huge possible comeback herald is on the map so we'll see how they're going to react to this one yeah and finally they're given an angle back into this game but at what cost a twelve and a half thousand gold lead ridiculous what amount of world. gold granted it's gonna be a little bit of an overextension coming through from ecstasy some of these shutdowns going back the opposite way but now it's just gonna be boss fighting against that herald has that level advantage went for the first item spear of shojin that's a little bit of an interesting choice as well and now whale is gonna pass their fate here in a 1v4 situation perfect execution goes back out over the wall trying to stay alive with everything that they're worth whale though getting so much movement speed just gonna flash out of there but boss on the back line do they have the damage do they have the skills to survive does not seem to be the case because they're in a 1v5. They don't care. They're going back in for it. They're going to rear everyone back. And those health bars are a little bit too low. But Boz getting the speed. Trying to look for anything back in. They're going to find that kill wow. under the Nami. Has that ult on top of them. It's a double kill going. Zillion ultimate will fade. The Cullen comes down. But it won't quite be enough. RPI. My goodness. They refuse to relent. It's got to be Wayless getting way out of there. It's got to be this resonating strike following through. But right into the jaws what? of the horse once again. 6-0-1 for Boz here. That gold lead continues to mount. And RPI are so far ahead. Oh my god, that's really insane. To be fair, I thought that at one point RPI seemed a little too overconfident on that place. I thought because Zeri had just died there in the mid lane, we had the shutdown on boss as well. On boss? No, on uh, mid in the top lane earlier. And then all of a sudden, even though Nitro had the flank, they had the numbers advantage, they were able to manage to get so much damage. And then exactly as we said in the draft, the Hecarim with the Zillion is going to be able to get to your backline so absolutely quickly. You don't even see the damage coming in and then you're just down. Adam, look at how this has been growing. And even though they had such big uh, shutdowns for pace, they're still the 13k gold head. Yeah, it's a massive gold differential right now. I mean, these objective bounties, these gold bounties are really the only way back into the game. But you just look at where the itemization is for some of these players. It's made a full item ahead at this point. You know, 3,000 gold up or something on that Cassante at this point. Doing math. No, not my strong suit. We're not going to bother with that. But even on the <laughs> bottom side of the map, it's a full item ahead for the Zeri. In the mid lane, it's half an item ahead for the Sakali. In the jungle, it's a full item ahead for the Hecarim, who had a little bit of a slower start just farming it out. Nitro, though, going to test their fate. Going to try and go over the wall looking for a steal. See the vision there going over the wall. Kicks him out. Not even going to get it, though. It's going to be the Darius cleaning that one up. And Nitro will repent their sins in the gray screen. It's another kill going in favor of Mitoe on the top side of the map. No, I don't even know how Mid was able to get that one. Because you had Nitro going in with the, with the Smite. And they weren't able to secure it. That's definitely a shameful pace. Because... Be that first dragon that they conceded in the very first minutes of the game is going to weigh down a little more now. We're coming into the soap point for RPI and it's going to be even more urgent that you try to get the next one. Then they don't even have positioning now to try to contest the Herald. So, so far, all of the objectives, all of the buffs have been for RPI and that's just summing up to all the, the gold differential that they, that they have been built so far. 
Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a massive gold lead. I mean, this Darius has two items, unfortunately, on the flip side for Kasai. They don't even have an, a, a Mythic complete. They're not even close to a Mythic at this point, it feels like. They just got sort of the garage sale of items, trying to survive that lane and trying to keep themselves alive most of the time. And unfortunately, not quite working out in their favor, of course. Nitro going to look on this bottom side of the map, but it's a four-level difference between this Lee Sin and this Darius. If they so want to take this fight, they may face the consequences mid, though... He faded into a little bit of a 1v4. Wayless on the side. Will they go in here? They've got that perfect execution into the middle of everyone. Look at the damage coming through from the five-point strike. This ultimate could be massive, but it's Exathy coming through with the static shiv. Frogs on that ultimate. It's going to be one. It's going to be two. Count them up. It's three for the Zeri. Oh my goodness. Wait. The fight continues under the tower. The chain lightning keeps going. Exathy, do you have the damage? Do you have what it takes? It's a quadra kill for the Zeri. Will what? she find it? Yes, it what? will be the pentakill going for Exathy. An RPI level. To clean this game up. What? Oh my lord! This is really showing why this Zeri on the hands of Exothy was so confident, so confident all throughout the game, Adam. They were absolutely comfy to be there, so deep into this base. They got the Penta. They have the Herald that might be able to even dance on. Oh no, it's not going to be a dancing Herald on the Nexus. Oh, Nitro goes down as well. And this is looking like the end of the first match. Well, Zeri and Darius have retreated. It's just a 3v4 right now, Adam. But they're still trying to get some damage on this Nexus. The minions are there. I don't, I don't know how this is going to go. Yeah, I mean, Boz taking a lot of damage, though. Going to use that ultimate to go back in. It's going to be Kasai going down Wayless in the middle of everyone. But do they have enough healing? Do they have enough damage? It's a double kill going over to the Akali. It seems as if they just want to close out the game. Zaxxon going to do what they can to try and find more damage. Nitro even going to go in. But it's too little too late. RPI take a convincing, a dominating game one in 21 minutes and 15 seconds. And my goodness. Zeri's back, baby. Oh my goodness. In a huge oh, way as well. Oh, wow. She is so back. She's on fire. She's on lightning fire. Oh my god. We finished the game on 20k gold advantage for RPI. What? What is that? Yeah. Come on. That is absolutely insane. And to be fair, most of it was because of the Zeri. Not, not only did we have the presence from Hecarim all throughout the map and Akali being great in the late game, but can we get a shout out for mid as well in the top lane? That Darius was wrecking anyone that came above that side of the map. Yeah, and it was just so difficult for the side of Pace to get back into it after a very strong early game. Even still, we pointed out the gold lead. You know, the Zeri wasn't that far behind. She was just farming, biding her time, just waiting for the right moment. And immediately, once they found the fights that went in their advantage, specifically on that top side, that Darius able to find, you know, two kills almost by themselves. Hecarim started to be able to roam around the map, and the Zeri was able to get just a little bit too much gold. All of a sudden, she turns it up to 11, drops the pentakill at, what, 19 minutes? That's so rare to see that happen as well. Pentakill in the base at 19 minutes. That just sort of tells how the game went. But, of course, we've got to look at what Game 2 has in store as well, and sort of what are we looking at for Pace to do to sort of get back into this series a little bit? Oh, gosh. I It, it might be a little too obvious but maybe 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 you should get a ban on that zero because that exothy was just outstanding on that champion we saw them getting a pentacle as you said in the base but what preceded that pentacle was her going in flashing into a base that still had uh the outer turrets of the base of course the tier threes inhibitors and she was just there you know with ghosting you know just there rolling around and dealing damage with her lightning how how <laughs> how do you get a player so confident to do that and i tell you how it's because you had the backup of that zillion you have you had the hecarim both the three champions there just being able to outpace ha, <laughs> the enemy team and just guarantee so much of outcome from every fight they got themselves into of course there was a little bit of a setback in the beginning but as we mentioned they just needed to farm a little bit more they get they got a, a cs lead at one point and from that moment on they just grew and took over yeah and it seems as if they just need to sort of 
maybe slow down the pace of what RPI has in store. We can't keep making these puns at this point, but nonetheless, we will be looking forward to see what these two teams have in store. It's going to be game two coming up. But we're going to take a quick break before we get into draft there. We'll be right back with more ACAC action. You just start I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a sore. I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore. Just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying a little. My God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I gotta do it big. The only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to. Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you. They was blocking the shine. Now I think it's my time to. Careful them dollar signs. Like lights, they'll blind you. Let me rewind to. Back when I was broke and I couldn't acquire two cents. And now I got two wrists. They were sleeping on me, homie. Must have got too big. Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like canned food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world. My vision on share mood. I mean, I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Your offer too little. Sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I got to do it big. That's the only way I can live. And welcome back, everyone, to more ECAC action here. Quarterfinals between RPI and Pace. And that first game, my goodness, RPI came out all guns a blazing. My name is Ray Adam. Alongside me is Soph Chan once again. And so, what just happened? I mean, it's it's hard to put it into words. It really is. I think the only word that we can put into is Zary, because how 
in the world does a team get a pentacle? Does a player get a pentacle in the enemy base at 20 minutes? How? Yeah. How? That's that's the only thing we can talk about, you know, because we, we had so many pieces that came together for RPI. That is very true. But you have to acknowledge how Zeri was literally the one part that made it to the top because the way they they countered all the attempts from nitro in the mid game in regards to um pushing and ganking the bot lane um hecarim helped so much with guaranteeing all the objectives in the early game as well so you made sure that that zeri was going to be super comfortable and that led into darius being super comfortable in the top lane because nitro was worried about zeri and when they came onto that darius darius was just like mm -mm 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 -mm. this is noxus and you have no place around here of course you know basically just dominating that top lane and wow i am absolutely astonished here pace band the zeri out there they want nothing to do with that would you believe oh, yeah would you believe it at that but nonetheless i'm very curious to see how the draft sort of change up here in this way of course it's going to be swapping sides here rpr red going to be on the red side sort of their home turf so to speak pace taking the blue side i want to see if their draft makes any sort of drastic changes there because i think that the one bright spot that came through from pace was that lee sin and i think played the early game very well it's just that you know it never really fell off in that game it just got out out damaged by everything else and it was just so hard to keep it up of course it's going to be kasai going back towards that kasante so feeling confident in it but maybe just saying i want a different matchup this time around yeah uh, absolutely not surprising at all that we we have the zeri we maintained most of the bands the same as we did last time for the difference of i believe it was a samira instead of a zeri in the first round and yeah i don't think pace has to change much i totally agree with you oh they, they have to darius oh they gotta be careful about that one wait is this a lock in carthus hello <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's going to be a complete switch up here. I mean, RPI taking the Darius into that Cassante once again. The matchup worked out perfectly for them, but maybe Pace are just saying, you know what? We want to take that matchup for ourselves. We want to keep it a stack. But I'm curious to see where this Karthus goes because Karthus jungle sort of the known factor. Karthus mid the historical factor. Karthus bot lane, <laughs> you know, that's the big brain stuff. I want to see if mm. XFP pulls it out. It would be oh interesting to see that. And I mean, but I mean, even in the jungle right now. There's a Maokai picked on the opposite side. Maokai's jungle clear is like okay and everything, but it's not Karthus's jungle clear. Karthus' jungle has the fastest clear by like a solid 15 seconds over the rest of the jungle cast. And that is so insane in the early game. But to be fair, one thing that would make that such a good advantage was how League was previously, where we had 315 the first scuttle crab now we have that extra 15 seconds for the enemy jungler to be a little more okay especially if you're a maokai you're a little slower but you definitely have great potential 14 fights in the late game and especially as soon as you reach the level six ganks we have a kaisa confirmed for pace i really like that i think there's a lot that can be done with the kaisa you you're able to be as well as safe but also a good scaler throughout the game you get very nice points all throughout it you're not just good at one stage where we, when we talk about cassidy is something that we really expect that to happen i i don't is this solo queue is it are we are we looking at the right draft is this correct i i think this is correct and i think this is rpi <laughs> just saying listen we won game one like that. Let us play our favorite champions. We're going to sort of show off holy a little bit holy. here. I mean, Wayla's was pulling out the Zed. Statistically, Zed is one of the best mid laners right now. And it's a little bit shocking to see that, you know, they're sort of thriving in this tankier meta. But, you know, Eclipse is such a strong item. You know, you have so many different options. Serral does is a great item. You know, Black Cleaver is a great item. You have a lot of ways to sort of cut through the enemy defenses here. And realistically, you need an AD mid laner because you're sort of revealing that your Karthus is going to be the one AP source wherever that goes. Whether that goes jungle or whether that goes bot lane at this point is yet to be determined. But of course, the rest of the band's coming down. The zillion going to be taken off of the table. Pace just really want to play as far away from that last <laughs> game as possible. They want to take away as many factors. They'd rather just play a completely different game. Granted, that top lane matchup already going to remain the same. We'll have to see how the rest of the map goes, especially now there's a Zed picked and a Kai'Sa on the opposite side. That Kai'Sa, oh man, she's going to have the time of her life. Oh yeah, she is. And it, it's going to be so much easier if you if you're a Kaiser, you're going to be you're going to have so much possibility to 
defend yourself from the Zed if you have a nice support with you. If they can peel you off, you just get the shield from your ulti. You're in a good spot. You're not going to take the damage. You may even dodge some, some shurikens there. And... Wait, Ozaya is not on the table, so it's not going to be Ozaya Rakan. It's going to be Rakan. Mm, I, I don't know. What could be filled in this pot? Would, would we think about a, a Lucian? I don't know if they match that much. No, I think they're just picking champions that they like at this point, realistically. <laughs> I mean, you get a Zed picked R3 here. They're going to try and have yeah. as much fun as possible. I mean, the Vexa on the opposite side is a very strong counter pick. You know, you have that fear charged up. If Zed opts to go in for that fight, you know, just going to get feared away in that regard. But I mean, even on the bot side, you know, Kaisa has ways to deal with Zed, as you were mentioning. But if the Zed gets a little bit too fed, all of a sudden yeah. those avenues become zero, and it's just like, well, I am playing AD carry in Season 13 where there's assassins running around everywhere, there's tanks wait. running around everywhere, and just not having fun. This wait, wait, brings wait. a different swing to things. That might be Maokai support, actually, and I don't actually yeah. hate this that much. Um, yeah, I, I will um, I will know if I actually hate this or not whenever I see the CDC for LPI. Yeah. Because... Okay, gimme, gimme, please, gimme. I am just so intrigued by these two comps, for real. RPI really looks like they're just going for their comfy picks. Pace is going for maybe counters. It's Karthus uh -huh. bot lane. It's, it's Karthus bot lane. lane. It's Karthus APC. What in the world are we casting tonight? Hold on. Where's okay. the Zed? Is the Zed going jungle? Do we or, or do we have an orange jungle? Gosh, Zed jungle was a thing like ages yeah. ago. Zed jungle like is a thing, and I mean, realistically, anyone has a jungle clear now with the sort of changes. You know, it is yeah. possible. Uh, try Jinx jungle, don't do it. It's very bad, but at least you can clear. You can clear, and that's the main part, right? Like, that's sort of the important thing for all of these junglers. It just really depends on who actually goes there, because realistically, you're not playing. Like something crazy like Orn Rakan bot lane. I, I think that that's a little bit too far gone at that point, in which case, you know, the Kais is going to have a pretty fun time at that. But, you know, if yeah. it's Zed jungle, if it's Darius jungle, you know, there's a couple of different options as to who could go there. I'm I'm curious as to what RPI are doing here, because I think they, yeah. they, they showed us their potential in game number one, and they're just, you know, sort of having a little bit more fun with this game number two. But it could be to their detriment here, because you look at the opposite side, and the pace team is... They've got a really well-rounded team comp. Yes, I was going to say, RPI, you have to be so confident and sure about your comp right now because this can go so wrong. <laughs> Just so wrong. You have Vax, which was a lovely counter for the Zed when wherever he is in the map, I would say. Even if he's not in the mid lane, even if we have a Darius jungle lord. Uh, I, I, no, I just jungle? feel it just feels so weird to say those words to, to, together, you know, like Darius jungle on jungle. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It, it sounds a little bit weird, but I mean, at the very least, we will get some answers on the opposite side of this break here. We're going to see if RPI Red are able to take down the 2 0 series over Pace University or if the, you know, meta comp from the side, sorry, meta comp will win out against the. What the heck is going on, comp? We'll find out. We're going to take a short break here. When we're back, we'll be on to the rift.
And welcome back, everyone, to the AC, ECAC eSports stream. God, I get my letters right there. We're Adam alongside <laughs> Zoshan once again. And uh, we sort of figured out where everyone is going. And I don't think this one was on our bingo card. We've got a ZADC. What is going on? I, I don't know. I kind of had a feeling that maybe the Z was going to go there. But to be fair, I felt a little embarrassed to suggest that live. <laughs> Here, I, I have to say, <laughs> Lexity is the one, the one player that got the pentacle as early as 20 minutes in this last match. So RPI are on their match points to decide if they're going Ooh. to take this one on a sweep. in or not, taking a little bit of damage from Knight. But wait, yeah, so just scare them off. Yeah, sort of pick up some damage in return of course this is going to be vex versus orn mid lane <laughs> definitely not the matchup we were expecting i mean you know the first two picks on this side you know they make sense you know the support matchup makes sense as well nitro though going to go for a little bit of an invade here getting a little bit of a tempo play to try and catch boss off guard here we talked about how quickly karthus can clear and graves can clear just as quickly in a lot of ways it really just comes down to if they can sort of get this read, if they know that Nitro is starting on this top side of the map and trying to sort of cheese it out a little bit. Yeah, but do they know? Because they don't have any vision there. Maybe they might have seen something from their positioning in their encounter in the mid lane. But yeah, they don't have any sort of vision here from the red side. So Graves is going to take that really easily for themselves and probably go for a maybe another um, clear. Or maybe just straight for a gank because Graves can do that just as easily. Maybe try to get an ambush on boss. They are arriving, so mm -hmm. we might see the encounter of the two junglers. Yeah, they look to be a little aware of the presence of Nitro here. They're just going to back away since they know that the, <laughs> the buffs are no longer there. Yeah, basically just being aware of what is going on. Ball's going to try and go over the wall. Almost able to steal that one away, but not quite. Nitro, they're going to have to go back over. Ooh. Has the ghost. No flash. First blood are going to be going over to Boz. They may have lost some of those camps on the top side, but they will be laughing to the bank with an extra little bit of gold in their pocket. First blood to go in their way, and immediately they just go into the enemy jungle. They're walking there. Yes, they are. As, as fast as a Karthus can walk, or maybe levitate, probably. Slow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah whatever they do whatever they do but yeah it's it's so rightly pointed out by you there adam because we we saw the Carthus getting invaded but they are still three minions ahead so that's really nice oh early flash on kasanti there kasai is gonna Ooh. be fl getting away from that one but buzz is finding themselves in Looking a 2v1 more. flash over the wall oh Ooh, he gets caught out just a little bit too far out of position. It was the early turnover from Capperjack. Unfortunately, Whale is not able to respond, and Boz, a little bit too greedy there, did get the smite down on the blue buff, but unfortunately will cough up the buffs to the opponent jungler once again. Mid, just able to find that pull as Kasai always oh, just tempting fate every single time. Damn. Kasante versus Darius matchup, though, going a lot better this time around. Yes, it really is. And I think it definitely uh, goes com coming from the fact that... Oh, bot lane, though. They, they don't even want to let me talk. Yeah, it's going to be Exathy going in with a lot of damage here on the Zed. It seems as if Rue is going to be the sacrificial lamb. Lots of damage being taken on both sides here. Rue just sort of trying to run into tower here. Exathy going to be able to collect that kill with a nice little spin of those blades. Going to be keeping Zaxxon alive. Rue giving over a kill to that Zed. And you do not want to let that champion snowball up. Yes, you really do not. But surprisingly enough, we have seen this Orn being so proactive around the map, getting roams, getting clears on wards, and definitely getting the backup for boss, precisely what got them the first blood for RPI. But what I was going to mention is I believe the top lane matchup is going much better now, even though it's still very dominant for uh, mid on the Darius. Uh, Kasai already doesn't have both the summoner spells, but it definitely g comes from the fact that they don't have a Hecarim anymore. So it's not going to be as much presence or as much fear <laughs> onto yeah. that lane as you can feel when you have a Hecarim on the opposite side. Yeah. But 
Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. in the mid lane there, you have a Vex that was supposed to counter the <laughs> Z, and then all of a sudden, you're a Vex against the Norn. <laughs> yeah, you're feeling a little bit worse for wear there. I mean, uh, I, as you mentioned, you know, the CS doing a little bit better for Kasai, but with no summoners available. Going to be a little bit of a challenge with Boz on this bottom side. Where does the Wall of Pain land? Does not land onto Zaxxon. The flash forward from Pizza Pie will be punished, but once again, it might be a case of them collecting what they can we are gonna get that flash out of there and now both summoners or both flashes at least down on the bottom side of the map for pace they're gonna have to play carefully now especially considering exothy with that flash available with all the damage that zed can provide still so omnipresent on this map mm -hmm. well at least right now they know that they they managed to escape there was a flash burned but at the end of the day zaxxon was healthy enough and especially that move speed from the E was just as close to get them away from the knockup from Pizza Pie. And that's nice for them. They saw that boss was out of mana. Karthus can do absolutely nothing with no mana. So they knew that this bot lane was going to reset just as did that jungler Nitro though. He's coming for aggression here once again. I, I believe they got it, did they? Yeah, Boss got it. Boss got the smite mm -hmm. down. So at the very least, they get that sort of extra little bit of money on the camp. They get the stack on the pet, basically, uh, of note this time around. Interesting choices. Last time, both of the junglers picked Bulbasaur as their starter. This time around, Nitro with the Charmander and Boss with the Squirtle. So <laughs> interesting to see that they opted to go for the Gustwalker there. You get a little bit more movement speed sort of going through your jungle, cleared, cleared a little bit quicker when you get that movement speed. Honestly, like the extra damage that you get with that, uh, with the fire starter there might be more beneficial when you're dropping your ult down. Really just depends on how you're feeling. I guess it all comes down to personal preference at the end of the day. Preference, though, on this bottom side of the map is to play as aggressive as possible, knowing that Zaxxon does not have that flash, neither does Rue. They're trying to find anything that they can to try and punish this Kaisa before she gets the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. And I want to mention how um, Nitro is still so aggressive in those invades they're managing it because they know Akathas is just so immobile they can just get into the jungle steal those camps away and right now that is actually working better than in the beginning of the game we might have something going on here on waylist because the follow-up from nitro has arrived damage from akali is going to be able to land and knock up mm -hmm. but it's not enough nice skill for pace and Equalizing on a two and two on the scoreboard. Yeah, but meanwhile, knockup coming down. Rue taking so much damage already. They're going to fall victim to Exothy once again. This bottom side of the map is going well in favor of RPI, despite the, uh, I won't even say, you know, side meta, off meta. It's just what is going on with Exothy. And meanwhile, <laughs> on that top side of the map, the Darius finds a kill. We actually get a quick time replay of that one while Exothy was finding the kill bot side. It's going to go in just under the tower. Big dunk, big spin. That's how you get it done. Just go in there, all of your summoners. Just get that damage down. <laughs> yeah, just get that damage down. And then you don't even have an ignite and you don't need it. You have the bleeding from the Darius passive is going to be enough. You have flash, you have ghost. So you're just going to be able to get those platins as well. Get back to safety. But one thing I was mentioning is how it's nice to see a full pace because they need this game to continue onto the series is that Nitro find themselves found themselves in a good spot to successfully steal and not fall back because they felt that it happened quite a lot in the last game. Lee Sin was doing well in those early ganks, but then all of a sudden they were falling behind in gold. So I think that is really good for pace right now. I would just expect to see Nitro going on other lanes to maybe... Um, just allow the other players to have a little bit of a share of this gold. Yeah, definitely just sort of building up over the course of time here. Very curious to see how these teams are going to be able to execute in their later game because thus far it's a slower early game from both of these teams. You know, last time around, Pace was finding these ganks with the Lee Sin. They were able to sort of increase the tempo and RPI basically just matched that and were able to outpace them as time went on. Now you can just see it's just a little bit slower and, you know, it's giving time for sort of CSing, farming up, just waiting for the right fights in these situations. Of note, First Dragon just now going to be started up by the side of RPI. Not going to get a repeat on that Chemtech Soul as that is the First Dragon. Meanwhile, Exithy just getting plates on this bottom side, and you can already see two kills. Got that 200 gold. 
Bounty on there. They've got the Ravenous Hydra already complete. The Zed is going to be pretty difficult to deal with as time goes on. Of course, top side mid in a little bit of a situation for themselves. The 1v3 is going to take them down. The ultimate from the Karthus, not quite stacked up enough yet. So Kasai will live. It's a nice pickup on to mid on the top side. Yeah, we we see that this time around pace has got more pressure. They they managed to at least get the the dominance on the top side, get the herald for themselves. But w once again, I have to say, how is this on just able to get so much of roaming potential? It's an on we're talking about. Y you'd expect that even more from Exodus the on the Z, but it's coming from Wayless, and they're going to push uh, push and pressure this one to get the turrets. They're just going to be around. No need to to be spotted. And Nitro, once again, is not done with stealing that top side of the red jungle. And of course, it's actually going to be the quickness going in on to Zaxxon. Zaxxon will not live to tell the tale. Rue going to be forced to flash out with that backwards ultimate as well. Exithy putting the third kill of the game. And yes, it's just turned into vertical jungling. Once again, you get a little bit more space on this bottom side of the map. You know you've got that strong Zed there. You know your top side not going to be as important. Granted, Boz bites off more than they can chew. They go down. Ornhorn going to come down, but it's just a little bit too late. The damage on Taru not quite going to be enough in the Karthus passive. Be a little bit of a chase down coming through from Exathy, but no moss. They aren't able to find it. Now, coming through into that mid lane. Nitro is here, ghosting in onto Wayless. No Orn ultimate available. They're going to have to run and turn tail. They're going to flash towards their team. Exathy is there, but the knockups are coming down. Nitro goes a little bit too deep. Capperjack going to find the first kill of this fight. Nitro goes back with the collateral damage, but now Exathy finding there another kill for themselves. It's going to get shut down by Capperjack. Ooh. Capperjack finding all the resets in this fight. A really nice flash back towards the bush there, towards that blue buff from Pizza Pie to get out of that one. But all of a sudden, Capperjack, 4-0-2 on this Vex. Hold the door. This game not quite as over as it looks. I am very happy to see that happening because at one point, we just saw uh, the jungles just switching around in the sides. We had Nitro on the red side. We had Buzz on the blue side. But then all of a sudden, Pace turned it around with having Capperjack just around the corner, getting the backup for themselves. And that was so great. You had the help from Rue as well. So bot lane, that shows a nice coordination from Pace. And that guaranteed that not only they got the, the follow-up on the kill on boss, but also managing, managing to get this Vax on 4 or and 2. That was really, really nice. And it was super confident from Nitro as well to go in so deep on that one. And once again, they find themselves in a little bit of a scuffle. Yeah, Nitro going to get knocked up, bounced around. It's a bounce house for the Graves. They did not want to go to the birthday party, but unfortunately, it's going to be a party going the opposite way. Another kill going in favor of RPI. Now, what do they do off the back end of this? Dragon not spawning for another little bit, another minute and 45 seconds. Yeah, on this top yeah. side of the map, Kusai... Definitely doing a better job in this matchup, sort of figured it out. Figured out that if there isn't that constant pressure coming the opposite way, if they can keep the wave state in a good position, they're going to be okay on that top side of the map. And that's exactly the case thus far. Granted, first tower should be collected here by RPI on this bottom side. Just denying as much CS as possible, as much money from this Kai'Sa. As, uh, once again, XFE has got a 40 CS lead. And while top side, Kasai, got to be careful going under the tower once again. Mid, not going to follow through with that one. Yeah, you gotta be careful. You know you're a strong and bulky boy on that Darius, but the tower is gonna be dealing so much damage, especially with the platings there. But I I totally agree with you, and I want to highlight is the same as you did. Exithy with the CS lead is really making all the difference for RPI. Oh, is it going to be another dive? No, I don't think it is. It's just the Darius getting a little bit of pressure, but they're fine for the moment. It's going to be a Rift Herald charge as well in that mid lane. Not going to get anything really for it. It's damage onto the turret, but plates have already fallen. So a little bit of a lower value Herald, all things considered, because you didn't get any instant gold. And now you look at the items coming through. Second Mythic of the game going to come down from Wayless here. It is the Radiant Virtue. So opting for a little bit more of a supportive Mythic, really based around using that ultimate, giving that healing to the team as well. Curious choice there. We've seen Jack show pop up. We've seen Heart still show up on that Orn as well. Opting for the Radiant Virtue instead. And some of these tank items, they've got some pretty crazy passives coming down. Specifically, Radiant Virtue. Very good on supports, as a matter of fact. 
Mm-hmm. I the one the one thing I need from Pace now, of course, as the Drake is spawning, is the pressure, is the is the presence here in the side, taking the wards down, getting the the area for themselves, but especially being able to convert the money not only on Vax, because that's going to start feeling a little heavy at one point. Oh mid though, they don't even care oh. about the tower. They flash in. It's enough oh. damage. How is that enough damage? And he was. Yeah, meanwhile, the fight on the opposite side. GQC Ball is going to find the first kill of that fight. Exity, though, in that back line looking for Rue, will find their mark. It's another kill going the opposite way. It's actually all five members. They just disappear wow. just like that. We can't even see the kill feed popping up in time. A triple kill for Boz. And all of a sudden, as soon as we said, you know, this game a lot closer, RPI said, nope, we're going to bust this game wide open. And now going to be taking down that dragon. The body's littered across the river. That gold lead starting to mount up once again has grown to about 5,000 gold. Could grow even more with these towers taking damage. And that's exactly what you mentioned earlier, right, Adam? We we talked about how Zaxan could be in a good spot with the Kaiser, but they really needed the backup and the protection from their team. And, well, it, it just didn't happen. For RPI to win that fight, it's exactly how they should have done it. They had... Uh, Exithy and Boss in the perfect spots to deal the damage. They are so squishy on the Carthos, on the Zed, but they can deal so much damage, and they did, and that basically resulted in such an early ace for RPI. So it's looking a little more similar to the last game in that regard, as they're starting to build even more of a lead in CS. Once again, they're going to have the pressure on to the second herald of the game and oh my god suddenly it's turned into a 5k gold lead there's just something random float what what's that in the sky you see that <laughs> just sort of floating around uh, i don't know what that is but that sort of distracted me for a long hey you see oh, that? Yeah. what's going oh, it on jumped. it was jumping it was a little thing it was, was it, jumping was it the pet jumping around i what don't the, know what the heck i really don't <laughs> Riot, Riot Games, everyone, but nonetheless, Wayless wants to play a game with Zaxxon in this situation. The Kai'Sa are going to try and dodge away from that wall, but this isn't Orn with a plan. The damage coming down, but look at the damage from the ram. Turn and Kai'Sa, turn and tail the opposite way. Wayless, even just going to give that over to the Aww. homie Exithy. Merry Christmas, buddy. There's your sixth kill of the game. And RPI, they're just playing with their food at this point. Oh my god, they are, but Ooh. now they're trying to go onto the Carthus wow. though. Shut down for Vax is going to be huge, but once again, not converting the damage uh, and the gold for the rest of the team. And we're going to rely heavily on this Vax right now. Once again, Ooh. the 1v1 here in the top lane. And unfortunately, it's Cassante falling down, but the backup of the team has arrived. Yeah, the all-out ultimate dragged him so far back into the enemy team mid in the middle of everyone needs to find that spin. Finds the healing in time. It's going to be the quickness that popped out from Pizza Pie at 12. Going to get out of there and say, it's not pizza time. We got to get out. Be trying to stay alive as well is mid taking so much damage. It's finally going to be Nitro taking them down. But now Exit in the middle of everyone going to be taken down as well. But here comes a huge ultimate Holy. from McCarthus. Finds two. The burn collects that second one. And Zaxxon, they just respawned, man. And they are already just limping away at half HP. Wayless, perfectly happy to keep this push going on the opposite side of the map. Oh my god. Who would have think that at the end of the day we would have such a healthy on at the bottom lane and still being able to 1v1 the ADC, being able to give the last hit for Exothy as they have been doing <laughs> in the last game, giving the pentakill for Zeri. And the shutdown, the execute from Boss on that ultimate was really juicy to watch. And to be fair, it was very close to, close to a triple kill as well. So as soon as this cast this cast is, gets even more items on that bag, it's going to be much more difficult to try to sustain yourselves when so much damage is Goodness. coming around. Yeah, and Boss just sort of biting off more than they can chew. Force the flash away. Rue gonna follow through with that twist in advance, but now the fear has come down. It's gonna be Pizza Pie sort of sacrificing themselves, just trying to buy as much time. Actually, Pizza Pie stays alive, and maybe Zaxxon picking up that shutdown on the Karthus once again. No Requiem to come down. It's just gonna be the single pickup, and with about 80 seconds away from Dragon. Surely, Boz is going to be back up in time for that, but the positioning not going to be ideal. Actually, Whale is caught out here. The Vex is there. The Fears are coming down. So much damage from the whole squad. Whale is forced to flash out. The Shirelia is going to be popped as well. 
Exit the even just gonna dodge away, gets that blue buff and escapes with their life. But all of a sudden, Pace just playing as this death ball, moving as five, and starting to find some relative success, all things considered, with this sort of playstyle. At, at the same time, we have RPI getting the, the tower on the top lane is gonna be possibly an objective bounty here in the mid lane as soon as the steel one falls as well for Pace. But it's it's really nice for RPI how they're able to convert things all throughout the map when, when the other side is falling. So you had the jungle up being shut down, but you took the top tower. You're pushing so fast on this one. You have the Zed. You have the presence and the, the fear that a Zed can put onto any ADC. And you have to be careful about your positioning. And even though you had pace so comfortable on that jungle, you're gonna see RPI just swipping away, getting the control wards in the in the river, and being able to get the dominance on the pit oh once again. Eight seconds, but it it's Wayless on another one v one, but this time against Kasai. Yeah, and Kasante actually just gonna dash into that horn horn, unfortunately. Gonna just be the Rift Herald pot, but look at what they're doing on the what? opposite side of the map. Zaxxon has almost no health, though. This is gonna be a little bit risky. They're trying to go for a Desperation Baron. It's gonna be Dragon taken on the opposite side as well. The Rift Herald was popped, oh. and while the oh. wall is pulled over their eyes, it's gonna be the tower collected, or the Baron collected, by the side of Pace. They're gonna get the reset down in time. But that Rift Herald is still full health and charging its way down to this Tier 3. At what cost? is that Baron, it's the Dragon, it's Soul Point once again for RPI, and potentially an inhibitor turret, although mid needs to be careful, taking a decent amount of damage, the Ghost gonna come down, the Spin not gonna find too much damage, and Zaxxon finds their second kill of the game. It's a tower in that mid lane as well, and the macro play, is that the right call at the end of the day to go for the Baron? You get it for now, you stall out the game, will that win you the game? Yet to be determined. I, I think this was a good call because they were able, I mean, it was very close. It was very risky. So we got to give them that for being able to be a little confident. Oh, Nitro, don't be overconfident though. You have the backup of your teammates. You're going to have to burn your ultimate there. But as I was going to say, they took down those towers, but they have the, the potential of coming back and they are doing so really nicely. They have the TP coming in too. So that's going to be great positioning from pace so answering your question i like the macro play they had going on yeah i mean it's working out sort of they're they're reaping the benefits of that now they picked that up and they've closed this gold lead down to 2k but the Ornhorn comes down lands onto one not quite the strike they were looking for but going golden is the vex caprachak gonna go down and now you gotta be so careful exithy is all the way in that back line drops down the ultimate on the zaxxon Axon doesn't take a whole lot of damage because of that exhaust with the knockup coming down onto the Kasante. Gotta be so careful if you're Kusai. You know, on the backside of this, Nitro looking for the damage, looking for anything that no! they can to get the kill onto the Karthus, but they are immediately shut down where they stand. Mid gonna find another one for themselves, and the Baron recalls gonna pull everyone back. It is a slight advantage over to the side of RPI in the fight. Nonetheless, it is still just duking it out back and forth, these fights go. 3,000 gold lead here at 23 minutes. At the very least, pace have lasted longer in this game than they did last game. Uh, yeah, I will say, um, RPI at this point, they would definitely be ahead if had pace not gotten that Baron from themselves because they were on 3k gold ahead and they maintained themselves on 3k gold ahead. If they had not gotten the Baron, I think pace would be on maybe 6, 7k um, gold behind. Because at this point, they got the objective bounties to maintain themselves on an equal <laughs> 3k gold differential. They had the T2 in the mid lane. They got the Baron to not only push, but also defend. So they were able to get those pushes on their towers in the, in the base much more efficiently. And I think it worked out really well for them. At the same time, RPI was great on the team fight. They were they know what they can do and they know how much their champions can deal of damage right now if they play correctly. And they did. So they on their side, they did great on maintaining the lead. Yeah, it really just comes down to if they can sort of 
keep the door open for themselves can pace, but RPI, they're still looking for these fights mid, just walking forward so aggressively, the Ornhorn gonna come down, Nitro gets knocked up, but it's a huge ultimate coming through from the cart that says Nitro gets taken down, Capperjack able to reply in kind on the back side of that with a Shadow Surge, but this front end of the fight is looking oh so challenging, the knockups coming through from the Rakan, Wayless collects another one, XST gonna drop down their ultimate, forces the Vex to go golden, what's the damage to come on the back end of this? Capperjack is trying to do exactly what they can, but there's so much damage coming through from XST nonetheless, and now Capper Jack has to run, turn tail, needs to find a way out of there. XFP has just a little bit too much damage, and despite the Zonyas, still going to be a kill going to the Zeta. Three for one for RPI, and they're breathing down the necks of pace. They're looking to take down some inhibitors there. That is exactly what they are planning to do with only the two tanks remaining. Oh my god. Yeah, they're, they're really wrecking this base down, and it's definitely due to the, to the TP, the flank, coming from were wayless there in the top lane it was great the own horn oh but the comeback from face is trying to do something here the damage onto pizza pie is going to be too close but not enough but there's still game to be played but adam rpi knows that this can be a little too hard for them if they don't end this sooner rather than later yeah, they just want to get it over with at this point, you know? You sort of, you've had your fun in the draft, you know, picking the Z ADC and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> but at this point, you do need to consider what your late game holds. And specifically, your Siege is effectively four melee champions just running at them and hoping that your Karthus can provide enough, you know, very slow auto attacks on the back end to take down some of these towers. It's not going to be the cleanest of Sieges in any regard. Now, Wayless going to be forced to run away from Nitro. Boz, though, needs to be the one that's careful. But look at the damage coming through from this Karthus. It is so strong at this point in the game. Vex coming over the top, exhausted. Boz going to be able to stay alive. Do they have the Requiem available? No, they don't. They're going to flash forward away from Zaxxon into the middle of the team. Will end up getting taken down, but Exethi is here once again. Here comes the Requiem from above. The damage comes down. The Orbital Laser finds a bunch. It's going to be a double kill now for Exethi, and now forced on the run is Kasai. All of that movement speed that the Kasante has is not enough. A triple kill for Exethi. 11, 2, and 6 on the Z80 carry, and they are looking to end this series they are looking to end this game and they're looking to do it exactly now still three seconds away from this maokai spawning but even then is that even resistance for the side of rpi as they start to siege down these turrets they collect one they collect two ru is going to do whatever they can to stall this one out they might be looking to pad the cat stats just a little more it's another kill for exathy and they will clear out this series surely enough eventually capperjack Try to put as much resistance as possible, but the auto attack sh should be coming down, and this will be a 2-0 for RPI. Yeah, it's a confirmed sweep for RPI with this absolutely unique and intriguing comp that worked out so well for them. You can see how that was definitely thought out. It wasn't something that they just pulled out of the hats in, in for this match. It was something that was premeditated. They knew how to handle that. They knew the summoner spells to have on every champion. You had the on with the tp and i think it was a ignite as well it was something unusual it wasn't a flash so it, it was definitely coming from a comp that knew what they were going to do they knew the potentials of the flanking of the roaming and they made that happen so well and surprisingly enough, the roaming wasn't coming from the Zed, it was coming from the Orn. <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit strange to sort of see how that comp all worked out. At the end of the day, we thought it was going to be Karthus bot lane. Instead, XFE says, you know what, I'm going to play all of those bottom of the alphabet champions there. The Zed comes down as the <laughs> option. You know, the correct way to say the letter to begin with, but, you know, we won't get into those arguments here, you know. Might be <laughs> Canadian or something, you know, just a little secret of the trade. But nonetheless, RPI coming away with a 2 0 and honestly just so dominant from the get go. It just seemed as if they had all the right tools, all the right gears in play. And of course, over 50 minutes of gameplay across two games, they were incredibly quick with their games and they were overall rather clean. Yeah, definitely they were. And this is quarterfinal, so this is a spot for RPI in the semifinals of ECAC, and that's going to be definitely amazing for them, considering that they had, as you said, such clean wins. Um, talking about pace, though, they had such a much better game this time around, but unfortunately it was too, too little too late, and they didn't have enough space or time to to grow on their champions rpi was so precise on going in for the end of the match they they knew exactly what they could do so you you don't let your zed unscale you don't let it like 
sink onto the floor. You just take the apex of your Z of your Carthus, deal all the damage, and just carry the victory away. <laughs> exactly. But of course, after that, we are going to head to a short break where we look for an interview with one of the victors here from RPI. Nonetheless, we are going to take a short break. We'll be back with that as soon as possible.
Welcome back, everyone, to ECAC Esports here. We're Adam and it's Oshan just breaking down this game once again. We've actually got a guest with us here. It's the coach from RPI Red. It's going to be Saitama Pai here. And Saitama, congratulations on a very dominant series victory against Pace there. Yeah, and sort of the first question here to open things up, you know, looking at that game one, you sort of were able to put together a really cohesive draft for yourself, really focused around that bot lane, Zeri Zillion. Walk us through how your idea of the draft is and what your sort of read on the meta is for this patch. What do you think is strong and why do you think your team did so well in game one? Oh, I, I think we might be having audio issues at the back. We'll, we'll try and get that interview for you in a little bit. But uh, nonetheless, so Sean, it was, it was it was definitely an interesting series from these two teams. We uh, we got to see a lot of picks and we'll get the thoughts of Saitama in a little bit in yes, terms we'll... of their uh, in terms of Zeri and all that sort of stuff as well. Specifically, I think that's the main one. But nonetheless, I should be curious to see uh, what comes through down the line, just sort of. Waiting to see what they're going to get. Yes, back in yeah, here. yeah. We're just getting things up and running once again. And it's just technical issues, you know. Anything that's different from that is definitely not on Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> Everything that is technical issues happens to Twitch stream. So. Yeah, we're just according to normal. Yeah, you know, just just the law. At some point, there's going to be something that goes wrong. And I mean, I, don't know, I believe there was what there was one computer crash that we got already. So you know that that always happens as well in these series. You know, you play League of Legends, you expect all ten computers to work, and will it work every single time? Odds are there's going to be a couple of uh, you know hiccups on the way. But nonetheless, I believe we should. have Saitama back. We, we might yeah, not. So we, we apologize for all the voices in our heads happening right now. It's getting a little chaotic, but... Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's really hard to keep like talking when there's like a whole conversation on the opposite side. <laughs> oh, it's... goodness. Yes, we're just getting things ready. We apologize for this. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I mean, just to, just to pull back the curtain a little bit, like, of course, we're sitting in a Discord call, right? And then there's all the voices going in our heads, and they're not coming through on stream, or at least we don't think they're coming through on yeah, stream. They might be coming as, through on stream. As much as we, yes. Mm -hmm. As far <laughs> as we know, we, we are getting some things here and some things not here. Okay, so... Can we can we verify production? How how are we doing in regards to Saitama on the stream? Let us know any updates on that Saitama regard. Here? Oh. Okay. You know what? We'll go with it at this point. If they hear you, they hear you. If not, we're gonna look uh, even sillier in that regard. But of course, once again, Saitama, thanks for joining us. Congratulations on the victory. How how do you feel after that win? Honestly, we'll start off with that question. We'll take it easier. How do you feel after that win against Pace? Yeah, well. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so apparently we're gonna we're gonna do something really fun. Uh, okay. I will repeat the question, and we'll do it from there. This is this is definitely fun. Oh. Well, I. 
I I think the the best thing for us to do right now is just to throw for a little break while we fix yeah. things. Oh. <sighs> oh. All right, we we might have we side over here. I think so. I think so. Hello, say hi to us. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> All right. Um, I think it's best if we don't repeat the first question three times. We know that you guys are very excited about <laughs> this and that you think that Pace also was great in their attempt at getting the the game into a game three. But you guys, I'm, I'm going to start off by talking about the question that Adam was introducing. So about the Zeri, how did you guys feel in regards to this patch and actually putting the Zeri to the test? So, what we think about Zeri, I mean, in the past, obviously, because it was a Zeri meta, we played, a, we practiced and played a lot of Zeri in the past. And, I mean, obviously, the changes, some of it, like, how she works changes and everything, the, like, how you want to build with all the items and how champions, like, change, right? But at the end of the day, like, how she wants to play team fights, how she wants to, like, kite, what support she wants to be paired with, what other champions want to be in the comp, that hasn't fundamentally changed too much. At the end of the day, she's this hyper-mobile scaling uh, ADC. Um... So, I mean, we were very comfortable, like, picking her, just like in the past. Um, and the reason, like, like we picked her uh, we picked her later on um, after we, like, picked the Zillion because we wanted to grab the Zillion in early, just in case, for some reason, they might ban it. I mean, Hank has a really large shampoo, our support, so maybe they wouldn't ban it, but just in case we want to grab it, it has great synergy with Hecarim and Darius, after all. But, um... Yeah, I mean, ultimately, like, Zeri, like, once we saw, like, their champions, well, the moment you see Nami, it's almost certainly going to be Lucian. So, oh, we just, we thought Zeri was a great pick here. So that's why we locked it in. And just sort of to follow up on that game of Zeri, you know, we saw sort of, I guess, standard meta at that. Game two, you come out with a comp that I don't think any of us were expecting, especially with where the champions ended up slotting out. Walk us through what that game two draft really meant, what the comms are like in the back, and sort of what the goal from that comp was, because it worked out, but just how did it work out, in your opinion? Well, I mean, how much did I say without giving away secrets is the question here. Mm -hmm. So one, I would say this much. Um, one of my biggest things that I want to bring to the table as a coach, right, is um, so personally, skill-wise, individually, like laning-wise and stuff, my personal skill as a player is uh, uh, inferior to my players. Otherwise, I'd be playing, right? But I think like one thing that I do bring to the team and one thing that I try to emphasize is uh, knowledge of draft and how like comps want to work and have flexibility in draft, right? Because these guys can all execute. I'm just there to make sure they get a comp suited for them, right? And so one of the things that I try to leverage is actually our team's uh, relatively large shampoo, especially Exothi has a very large shampoo. Exothi and our bot lane has an exceptionally large shampoo. Uh, same with our jungler, top and mid but especially bot lane and like flexibility. Like we've tested out shit like, uh, sorry. <laughs> we tested out stuff like Zed and Karthus in the past. Um, that's obviously something that like some people have called for in the past. As, and it's, uh, we've tested uh, Zed in multiple different roles and uh, it's just something we thought could work this game. And ultimately, I mean, it seems like it worked, especially given the current fact that uh, Zed's actually pretty strong given the fact that most Ravenous Hydra uh, users are very strong right now. So we thought it would work and um, We've tried it a bit in the past, so we went for it. Yeah, that's really nice. And I, I appreciate you there trying to give us as much as you could, as well as keeping things secret. Of course, you don't want to spoil anything about your strategies. So thank you so much. We really appreciate you being here as, as long as this interview lasted. <laughs> and as good as we try to make it for you, it's it's a pleasure to, to have you here. Mm -hmm. Congratulations once again on your victory. But tell me, Saitama, do you have any shout outs you want to give to people? Any thank you? before we go uh just want to give a shout out to my team and uh for working really hard and also give a shout out to the other members um in part of like the coaching staff for helping me especially uh calvin who's basically like, my right hand man in all this uh he helps me set up like the scrims he helps me set up the matches communicates with all the organizers they're all really important for me and the team wouldn't function nearly as well as if, if it wasn't for everyone's help there, there's a reason why we work as a team you know so yeah, I just want to give a thanks to that, and uh, thank you guys for having me. 
No worries. Thank you for joining us. Uh, despite all the technical difficulties, that was Saitama Pai, the coach from RPI there. And of course, that about wraps us up for tonight. So we got to see some really interesting games come through. We got to see absolutely everything that you could possibly ask for in a series. You got the Pentakill, you got the early game, you know, start to turn around. You got to see a little bit of a comeback of Baron Steel. But nonetheless, uh, you know, any final thoughts from you from the broadcast tonight? I think I just want to reinforce exactly what you just said. We got a little bit of everything, the pentacle in the base, the early games, the stomps, the close games that was the last game that suddenly turned into a relentless victory from RPI, the Zed bot lane, <laughs> the Garthus jungle that we hadn't seen in so long, the roaming on. So I think we literally got everything we could have ever asked for. So it's just a, a thank you and a probably see you soon for those semi-finals since we have completed the quarterfinals of ECAC tonight and it's been a pleasure the first time working together of course my pleasure as always to be co-casting alongside you so and a huge shout out as well to our uh, production at the of course keeping us sane making sure we got all the angles and working us through those technical difficulties that you know both of us probably wouldn't have been able to figure out on our own regardless but thank you to everyone at esports U for setting up this stream thank you to everyone at ecac esports for hosting us of course that will be all for tonight as for uh, myself and sochan good night everyone hey man i just can't find a comfortable headset i mean i've tried everything literally everything Jeez, my brother, I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards, is real big. I got to do it big, the only way that I can live. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 Wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Wow. I think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a sore, I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. Just kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying to little my god is real big stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big i gotta do it big the only way that i can live and i promise i'm trying to before you count me out homie let me remind you they was blocking the shine now i think it's my time to careful them dollar signs like lights they'll blind you let me rewind to back when i was broken i couldn't acquire two cents and now i got two rents they were sleeping on me homie must have got too big Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like can food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world, my vision on sham mood. I mean, I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Your offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I got to do it big. That's the only way I can live. Hey, man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The 
HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. That is comfortable. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Say trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards, is real big. I got to do it big. The only way that I can live. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 Wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. I think too small, I got big dreams. You just start, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams.